Welcome to the sermon podcast of Midway Christian Church. We're a Disciples of Christ congregation located in Midway, Kentucky. You're always welcome to join us in person or follow us on Facebook or YouTube. Join me now as we hear and read the word of the gospel in the book of Acts, chapter 2. I'll be reading from the New King James translation. As you find that scripture text in Acts chapter 2, verses 37 through 47, out of respect of the reading and hearing of God's holy word, please follow along. <clears throat> the word of the Lord reads as follows. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. They said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise is to you and your children and to all who are afar off as many as the Lord God will call. And with many other words, he testified and exhorted them saying, be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day about 3000 souls were added to them. And the continuing steadfast, steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together, and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods, and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily, with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they, they ate their food with gladness and the simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Again, and the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved saved. God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. First, giving honor to God and to this opportunity and great responsibility to break bread with you on this morning. I'm thankful and grateful to my sister in Christ, the angel of this house, Pastor Heather McCall, McCall for extending this pulpit on this morning. I won't be before you long, I pray. Uh, but if we are on one accord, uh, let us delve into this scripture text and much more because of this title, TBD, to be determined. This is a classic placeholder. It's often used sometimes to, to denote something that is not known, um, not determined yet, or not decided. This morning it is my purpose to expose a simple truth in order to shed light upon our collective Christian journey. We must be determined. In that dramatic scene on Calvary's Hill, three men were crucified. We, we never forget that all three were crucified for the same crime. Yeah, the crime of extremism. See, two were extremists for immorality, and thus they fell below the, their environmental and social tolerances. The other, Jesus Christ, was an extremist for love, truth, and justice, and thereby rose above his environment's aptitude for understanding such things. Perhaps this community, this nation, and especially this world are in dire need of creative extremists for God's love, truth, and justice. What is that going to take? Well, that's 
to be determined. Let us pray. Anointing, anointing fall afresh in this place. Heavenly Father, grant your Holy Spirit to saturate this atmosphere, Father God, that we might once again be on one accord to receive a word from you. Let the power of your Holy Ghost fall afresh on each individual here this morning. And we'll be ever so careful to thank you in advance for your visitation. Hide me now behind the cross, dear God, that not anything that I may present will falter or be a stumbling block unto your people, but yet be used as a stepping stone to draw closer unto thee. We lift up this prayer in the matchless and marvelous name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Amen. To be determined. So what do we know? What has been made known when we consider this scripture text and we understand the, the, the theme of Pentecost? Well, we recognize that Pentecost was the second of three annual celebrations for God's people in the Old Testament, going all the way back to Exodus 34. And originally, it was called the Festival of Weeks, seven weeks or 50 days, thus the word Pentecost. And it's amazing when you consider and you study this, this festival of weeks, it's actually a festival of harvest time. And you know in harvesting, you have to plant a seed, give it time, and then the season of harvest comes to pass. Amazingly, when you run these two themes together, you can understand and you can see how Peter was planted in a special situation for three years and justifiably so it took some time for God's theme and God's message to come into being and eventually come to fruition so that there was a great reaping and harvest at this appointed time. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we find in Acts chapter 2 and 37 and 47 that the gospel seed was sown and supernaturally and exponentially the harvest increased in due season. So what is it to be determined? What, what precisely do we need to know? We, will, we need to know, first of all, that that time between seed and harvest, that time between the planting and the reaping, that time is God's time. And in God's precise time, it took an opportunity unlike any other. Because man could not plan it. We, we could not understand or comprehend it because oftentimes when we're under pressure, when we're face to face with the world and the way things are, we tend to shirk back and want to neglect responsibilities that God has placed upon his people. Well, don't feel too uh, uncomfortable yet because uh, this, this is the theme that was going on in that upper room. This is the very thing that got those people so uh, uh, agitated because they did not understand the power of God's time. In Acts chapter 1, verses 4 through 6, Jesus commanded them. It says, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. John baptized by water but you shall be baptized with the Spirit. Jesus was good at just telling things as they were, but can you imagine hearing something like that at that time without the, the power of the Holy Spirit giving you understanding? Can you imagine hearing something at that time? Were we going to walk through fire now as, as John baptized in water physically and mentally? The 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 theme was confusing, but it was not the precise time as of yet. Jesus was preparing his flock. Uh, just be obedient to my word. Do not leave Jerusalem until the promise of the Father has presented itself to you. So, so we also see in 
chapter 2, verses 1 and 3, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, which is to say when God's time was manifested, when the day of Pentecost had fully come and all were in one place on one accord, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house. The power and the breath of life rushed into the house and man's comprehension was that it was a mighty wind. For those biblical scholars and those who, who delve into Hebraic texts, we understand that roha is the term for breath. And when you, when you consider that this mighty wind entered into this, temp, this, this upper room, we can truly see with our spiritual imaginations that God was breathing life into a dead situation. That God was, was breathing life and resuscitating this birth that we now celebrate as the church of God. He was birthing bringing into existence a new life. Chapter 2 and 4, Then there appeared unto them divided tongues as fire, one sat upon each of them, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. You, you, you must admit, you must admit that at some times, in order to remain faithful, it takes determination. In order to remain obedient, it takes determination. It's been my limited experience in this lifetime that at your most inopportune times, in order for you to remain in God's will, you must be determined. Beloved, God's ways are not our ways. Also translating that God's will is not our carnal will. It is the way of the world to seek and remain comfortable. Instead of finding delight in the law of the Lord, it finds distraction in the form of entertainment. When tribulations cover the globe and national disasters rise, or when civil unrest springs forth from a spirit of liberation, the status quo seeks to go along to get along out of the mindset based on profitability. Before I lose you, let me give you a quote from Dr. Martin Luther King from his book, Where Do We Go From Here? It says, one of the greatest liabilities of our history is that all too many people fail to remain awake through periods of social change. Every society has protectors of the status quo and fraternities of indifference who are notorious for sleeping through revelation. So, so at this time, you can go ahead and touch a neighbor and say, wake up. <laughs> go ahead and touch a neighbor and say, wake up. wake up. Amen. But today, our survival depends on our ability to stay awake, to adjust to new ideas, and to remain vigilant in the face of the challenges of change. Make no mistake, saints of God, when we, we go over these texts and we, we read these, these narratives of our faith tradition, you, you have to realize that this was no easy journey for those who were gathered in that upper room. Make no mistake that this was not some happy time and everything was, was happy-go-lucky. There were over 120 disciples, counting men and women, that were facing persecution over this resurrected Christ. See, the powers that be were fighting for the status quo to remain in power. There could not be a narrative of a man, uh, a social influencer, uh, uh, capable of healing the sick, feeding the needy, and forgiving sins. That's clergy work. That, that's clergy business. Not only is he able to raise the dead, but he's able to raise himself from the dead. No, that's going to take too much attention from our pocketbooks. Yeah. Yeah, he has to go. 
and all those who follow him has to go. That's not a good, comfortable place when you're following Jesus. To know that everything on the outside is looking and, and, and searching for and persecuting those who are following this world changer. Because that type of power can change the world. And here's a hint. It's meant to change the world. Those who made it a business to profit from pain and suffering so passive acceptance as a cure all for all that ails you. Jesus chose to have his followers provide a prayer service. <laughs> Chapter 1 in Acts 12 and 14. They, they, they chose and they decided to have a prayer service. And in this prayer service, they, they had a discussion and, and there were so many things going on. There were so many ideas and so many problems that was coming on. And I'm quite sure it's just like we have at our, our, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm preaching to the preacher right now. But, 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 but what happens is at some point in time, everybody has to get on the same page. In order to move forward, everybody has to be on one accord. And once they are one accord, hallelujah, I'm getting ahead of myself. But you know, when everyone was in one place, at one time on one accord, the spirit of the Lord saturated the atmosphere. Yeah, it changed their perspective. It changed their outlook. But beforehand, amen, but, but before, before that one accord happened. See, everyone was concerned about their lives because their world was being shaken. Their very life was being turned upside down. And in the midst of that, their rabbi, their teacher, their leader was gone. The one who had perspective, the one who could calm storms, the one who could feed hungry was gone. I'm sure there was a great struggle to remain calm in the face of anxiety. It had to be hard to put on a brave mask in the face of fear. And I imagine that it might have even been floated out there that maybe we should just stay up here in this nice, safe little room. Don't even go back outside anymore. Why don't we just stay here and where it's comfortable and not even tell anybody who we follow? Oh, and they have air conditioning, sister? <laughs> oh, well, no, 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 I'm, I'm move forward. Let me move forward. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Listen, so, so the, the second excerpt from, from Dr. King uh, that I want to share with you uh, it says that freedom is not won by passive acceptance of suffering. Freedom is won by a struggle against suffering. And using that very concept, we can see why it was necessary for Christ to suffer. See, freedom from sin came at a price. For the wages of sin is death. I say the wages of sin is death. Somebody somewhere has to pay that price. Freedom from that freedom from sin and that curse that it brought did not get won by a last second three point shot. Freedom from sin was not won on that last game winning drive. It wasn't even one coming down the stretch down to the very last furlong. No, sin still causes so much unnecessary suffering in this world. And so many of God's people choose to sedate ourselves with the opiate of entertainment. We become too familiar with that passive acceptance of suffering, also becoming comfortable with the status quo, but God, hallelujah, but God had a placeholder. God had the ultimate placeholder at, at a very precise time in a very particular place in history. Victory over sin was won on that old rugged cross. Now that's good news. That's good news. That's the purpose of this gospel message, that there is hope, that there is reconciliation, that there is a purpose for God's people, and that is to be and remain determined. Be determined to share his love. Be determined to share his divine truth. Be determined to stand 
for his justice. So what do you decide on today? You have to make a decision. I know we don't, we don't see ourselves as radical revolutionaries. Many of us lack the, the creative juice it takes to, to be influencers in society and, and create that massive spark or change. We struggle with everyday changes in our lives and in our personal lives as it is. Is that so different from those who gathered in that upper room? Do you think that they were prepared for the changes that were to come? No, but they had to remain diligent. They had to make a decision that regardless of what happens, we're going to stay here like Jesus told us until the promise of the Father comes. It's not so different from us on today. We must decide to follow Jesus. We must decide to remain obedient. And it's a funny thing about that word decide. See, the, the terms pesticide and herbicide and insecticide, they all have a suffix C-I-D-E added at the end of that word, meaning something has to die. Something has to die. All things have to die. All options have to be off the table when you make a decision. You have to stick and stay. A decision must be made. And when you make that decision, you decide. That means that everything else is off the table. I'm going to stay. I'm going to remain determined. And it takes determination to see things through. What happened in that upper room would have no effect on any other life outside that upper room if they had not remained determined. Had not that truth been shared with the world would not have happened if they just remained in that upper room. See, all the worshiping in the world and all the praying and all the getting together does not matter unless we are on the same page being determined to create a social and spiritual change that God's message has empowered us to take, listen to me, outside of these walls. It takes determination to stand in the face of adversity and speak truth to power or even to clarify misunderstandings. Standing where God places you takes determination. Going where God tells you to go takes determination. Doing what God tells you to do takes Determination. We ask God to hear our prayers even when his answer doesn't look or sound the way we want it to. God has not forgotten you, saints of God. God has not ignored your prayers. We have to remain in his will and be determined to see things through. The mysteries of the gospel have been made known. There is not a more opportune time than now. Today is the day to decide. For I have decided. <laughs> I've decided to follow Jesus. Though no one go with me, I still will follow. The world behind me, the cross before me, I still will follow. That cross where victory was won, that cross where hope was restored, that empty tomb that proves our Savior lives, yes, gives me the determination to continue. The Holy Spirit that unites, invigorates, and empowers came at a price. That place at the table that we sang about, yeah, that, that the price came that, 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 that place came at a price. And guess what? I'm here to give you some good news. Yeah, Jesus paid it all. Amen. Jesus paid it all. Our original placeholder, taking the place for our sins, all of the sins of the world, being the perfect sacrifice at God's precise time so that we can be here today standing and being determined. Here's what happens when you stand and be determined. Uh, the, the, the scripture says, now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. They were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, repent 
And let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I'm here to share with you on today that we must remain determined and remain vigilant. Let it be so. Amen. Amen. We hope you enjoyed this sermon podcast of the Midway Christian Church. If you'd like to learn more about our congregation, please go to our website at midwaychristian.org.